Vertical Uniform Circular Motion Have you ever been in a car or a bus that went over a bump or into a dip? Do you remember feeling slightly lighter or heavier than usual? This is not a trick of the mind. When you ride over a hill or into a dip, the normal force exerted on you by your seat changes how heavy you feel. This feeling of heaviness or lightness is your apparent weight. It is due to a change in the normal force acting on you. Apparent weight is often what we draw on our free body diagram as the normal force that opposes the downward force of weight. It's the force pushing up on an object by a surface. When that becomes zero in the vertical direction, the object becomes weightless. That means the object's apparent weight is zero, not that the force of gravity is zero. Airplanes can fly in a way that changes the apparent weight of its passengers. Passengers can even become weightless, meaning that their apparent weight is zero. We can think of the top of a hill as being part of a circle, so this car's path is circular at that point. Assuming constant speed, it is in uniform circular motion as it goes over the hilltop. In this diagram, the hilltop is the top of the red dotted circle and the blue dot is the car. Its velocity and centripetal acceleration are shown as black and green arrows. Draw a free body diagram of the car, making sure to include its weight and the normal force acting on it from the road. Next to your free body diagram, draw the direction of acceleration. This shows that the normal force is pointed up. The weight and acceleration are both pointed down. There are no horizontal forces. Now, use Newton's second law to write an expression for these forces, making sure that the signs for the forces and acceleration are consistent. All right, so we've made up positive and down negative. So we have F equals MA, and our two forces are the normal force, F sub N, and that's positive because it's pointing in the positive direction, minus mg because we have mg pointing down to the negative direction, and that equals negative ma because acceleration is also pointing down in the negative direction, so that one's negative. So if we solve this for the normal force, we just move that to the other side, we have mg minus ma, we can factor out an m, and then we can replace a with v squared over r, since we are briefly in uniform circular motion as it goes over the hill. This provides the normal force for objects moving along the top of a curved vertical path. Since the normal force provides the feeling of weight, this equation shows that while the weight of the object is constant, mg, its apparent weight depends on its motion. So if we uh, multiply this out, we see it's mg minus mv squared over r. And normally, if you were not driving on a curved path, the normal force would be equal to mg. So you can see that when you're driving over the top of a hill, it's going to be less than mg. So it's mg minus this amount here. So that's why you feel like you weigh less. The apparent weight that the passengers feel is less than the weight they feel when they're traveling on a flat surface. So mg minus mv squared over r gives you your apparent weight. In fact, an object becomes weightless when the normal force is zero. So solve for the velocity at which an object would become weightless. All right, so if the normal force is m times g minus v squared over r, the normal force is going to be zero when the term here is equal to zero. So g minus v squared over r equals zero. We can move v squared over r to the other side. g equals v squared over r. Then we can flip it around. We're gonna be solving for v. So multiply both sides by r. Then take the square root. And this is the velocity at the top of a circular path when an object and its passengers become weightless. It's worth noting that at higher velocities, our model breaks down, since the car would fly off the hill and the normal force would be zero.
Let's determine the apparent weight at the bottom of the circle, driving into a dip in the road. We'll assume that the car maintains the same speed it had when it went over the hill. But while still pointing towards the center of the circle, the normal force is now opposed to the weight of the object, so will yield a different result. The passengers will feel a different apparent weight. Draw a free body diagram of the car, making sure to include its weight and the normal force acting on it from the road. Next to your free body diagram, draw the direction of acceleration. Alright, so we have the normal force pointing up and weight pointing down and acceleration pointing up. There are no horizontal forces. Use Newton's second law to write an expression for these forces, making sure that the signs for the forces and acceleration are consistent. We begin with net force equals m times a. All right, so we're gonna plug in our forces. We have normal force pointing in the positive direction, so that's why it's positive. We have mg pointing in the negative direction, that's why we have negative mg, and that equals ma. We can move that term to the other side, and now we have mg plus ma. We can factor out the m, and then we can substitute in the expression for centripetal acceleration since the car is briefly in uniform circular motion. And we get the normal force equals mass times g plus v squared over r. This provides the normal force moving along the bottom of a curved vertical path. Since the normal force provides the feeling of weight, this equation shows that while the weight of the object is constant at mg, its apparent weight depends on its motion. So if this, if we multiply this out, we see mg plus mv squared over r. And the normal force, if you're driving on flat ground, would just be mg. So you can see that this normal force is more than mg. It is mv squared over r more than mg. So along the bottom of a dip in the road, you will have higher apparent weight than you would along a flat road. Let's solve for when you would feel twice as heavy as normal. All right, so the weight you normally feel is when the normal force is mg. So you would feel twice as heavy when the normal force equals 2mg. So we're gonna replace the normal force here with 2mg and then solve for v. The first step is to divide both sides by m, so those go away. Then we're gonna subtract g from both sides. So we move that g over there, 2g minus g gives us 1g equals v squared over r. Then we're just going to swap the sides because we're solving for v and we want it on the left side. Multiply both sides by r, so that r goes away. Now there's an r over there. Then we take the square root, and the velocity equals the square root of g times r. Passengers moving at this velocity would be weightless at the top of the curve and be double their weight at the bottom. These expressions give the apparent weight of an object at the top and at the bottom of a circular path. The second term, v squared over r, here and here, that determines the increase or decrease in apparent weight. This equation gives the velocity at which an object becomes weightless at the top of a circular path. It is also the velocity for doubling the apparent weight at the bottom of that circular path. 